Eric Darling here with Darling Data, and uh, we're going to try something a little bit different today. Uh, I believe that I have fielded enough high-quality questions to do uh, our first Office Hours episode. So uh, we're going we're gonna to try this out. We're going to see how it goes. So hope you're all prepared. I, I, it's it's been a little while. So you, it's been a little while since I've, I've done one of these, uh, but here we go. Uh, if you like this channel's content, if you like watching Intel, time out looking for drivers, which is always a good time. Uh, you can you can become a member of the channel. You can join fifty some odd other people who have uh, said, Eric Darling, thanks thanks for all you do. Uh, here's four bucks a month. And I, 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 appreciate, I appreciate every last one of you, as individually and as a group. Uh, if you don't have the four bucks a month, I mean, you know, uh, Christmas did just pass and a lot of people are still struggling with credit card debt. Uh, there are all sorts of free things you can do that, that help me grow this channel, like liking and commenting and subscribing. Uh, if you want your question to appear on a future episode of Office Hours, you can go to that link right there which is also in the video description. It's amazing how this works. Uh, and you can, you can uh, put your uh, high quality question about SQL Server performance in, in the question bar and I will answer it right here. Uh, if you need help with your SQL Server, if maybe the answer you got was not quite enough to get you over the proverbial finish line, uh, I am available to do all of these things with SQL Server. Uh, health checks, performance analysis, hands-on query and index tuning, dealing with your SQL Server performance emergencies, and training your developers so that you can avoid SQL Server performance emergencies in the future. Uh, if you would like to get people trained. If you would like to get yourself trained, you can get all of my performance tuning content uh, for about 150 USD. Uh, again, this whole fully assembled link for you is available in the video description. Uh, for upcoming events, SQL Saturday New York City 2025 is still taking place on March 10th. May 10th. Good Lord, I can't even read today. It's going to be interesting reading questions, isn't it? May 10th uh, at the Times Square building in Manhattan. So you, you should go there and come uh, learn some more stuff. About, about, about data. It's not just SQL Server, it's, it's data in general. Uh, so with that out of the way, let's, uh, let's, let's go answer some of these questions. Now, these are the questions that I have fielded so far uh, from you, the public, and we're gonna, we're gonna work our way through these. So uh, the first question we have here is, do you like me? Yes or no? Well, I mean, the obvious answer is no, I don't like you. I love you. Why? Why would why would we stop it there? Why would we stop with? Why would we be such a low ambition uh, couple here? Like you? Does Eric prefer nested loops or Fruit Loops? Well, it's an interesting question uh, because I I prefer uh, the parallel version of both of those. I would I would never want a, a well, it's gonna, this is going to be a, a quite, quite the entendre. I would never want a cereal nested loop, and I, I would never want to eat a cereal nested loop on its own. So uh, as long as the loops are parallel, um, I'm, I'm happy with either one of them. They are equal in my eyes. If Eric was an operator in an execution plan, what operator would he be? Well, I think, I think that's obvious. It would be... Delete. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, sometimes my SQL Server quits responding, so I reboot it, but then it takes forever to come back online. Well, um, accelerated database recovery it would be a pretty good option for you, assuming that you're on SQL Server 2019 or up. Uh, like most, most of the, the reboot time of SQL Server comes from all that pesky transaction log stuff and uh, accelerated database recovery helps you avoid all that. Then uh, there's, a, there's another question here at the end. Well, I mean, I guess that first one was more of a statement. Is there an easier way to corrupt my data? Well, um, you know, you can always use no lock hints. You can always use DBCC write page. There's, there's many easy ways to corrupt data. 
uh, all depends on how far you're willing to go. Here we have a really good question. Can you fix my SQL Server performance for free? Here's my execution plan. Well, believe believe your execution plan has become corrupted. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what is going on there. It looks like it started off strong with a, a parameter called two. So th this looks this looks to me like perhaps uh, an issue with simple parameterization, or perhaps this is uh, an ORM generated query because this is this is. Uh, not the type of parameter that I would expect a human being to name right there. Uh, and then we have, oh, oh dear, we go up to parameter 38. That's a, that's a big one. Uh, 38 parameters. Perhaps you're dealing with long in clauses. I don't know. Something is amok there. Uh, all right, let's, let's, let's move on a little bit. Let's see. Uh, can I edit my response? I guess, I guess we never... I guess we never got around to testing that. Uh, yeah, the, the, the actual answer is yes, you can edit your response. If you, if you type in your question and then you're like, wait, did I make a typo? You can edit your response. So that is a big resounding yes there. Are you free later? Well, this is not the type of question that someone would ask if they were confident in their not work. I would suggest if you're wondering if I'm going to be free later, you should learn how to tie better knots or buy stronger rope or do something else that would help you be more confident in whatever scenario you're envisioning. What the, someone who really sh maybe perhaps should have edited their response, what is the best champagne to buy someone when you find out they don't have to use Microsoft Fabric? Well, assuming you meant the champagne that you drink and not the, the champagne that is, uh, I, think, I think that's how the lake is spelled. I was never quite that good at geography. Uh, but I assume that if you mean the, 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 the drinkable, potable, sparkling wine, um, I, I, I enjoy Krug quite a bit. Uh, I enjoy Ruinart quite a bit. Uh, they make a very good Blanc de Blanc. Uh, so either one of those would be sufficient. But I just, I just want to point out that no, no one has to use Microsoft Fabric. In fact, I would, I would do my best to dissuade anyone from using Microsoft's beta version of Databricks. It's, it's, it's a real joke. Um, it's, it's probably got about 16 months left until it's something else. So, you know, don't get too attached. Whatever, whatever bottle of champagne you buy will probably last longer and have a longer shelf life than Microsoft Fabric. All right. So, uh, hi, Eric. Hello. <laughs> hi. Uh, I'm having huge problems with a table that stores text files in a Varkar Max column. Can you suggest an alternative to that? Well, um, you know, it, it's, it's a fairly well-trod well path uh, that you should not be storing uh, blob files or blob data in your in your database. It's going to end up it's going to end up being rather painful for you. Uh, the smart thing to do there is, of course, to to store a, a pointer to the file system in a reasonably sized. It could be a Varkar five hundred some odd thing. Uh, usually, that's usually about enough to store a, a file path, depending on how how deep your directories go. Uh, and you could just store a pointer to that file on disk and, and, and just access that file on disk rather than try to store that in your database. Uh, file stream is a real lousy feature. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't expect anything out of that if that's what you're using. Uh, if you're just storing the, the, the data is, uh, well, I mean, you're, you says you're storing it as a varcar max and not a, not a binary. So it's not even anything that you could convert. If you're just storing the, the text of the text files in there, well, God help you. Um, uh, I think if, 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 you're, if, if you're storing the text of the text files in the column, which is a different scenario, uh, what you would probably want to do is uh, put that into a different table and maintain the primary key from both tables and just do lookups to uh, the, the, the max column in the sort of lookup table for that. Um, that, that's, that's usually the best solution there. Uh, there's also an SP table option option to store, uh, all blob data, uh, off row, uh, which can sometimes help with some things. I've messed around with that a bit in the stack overflow database and the posts 
table with the the the, uh, the body column because that can be very long. That's also an that's an Envar Carmax field, uh, and it, it certainly has some interesting stuff that it does uh, to performance there. But uh, yeah, uh, in general, um, depending on what your exact scenario is, is not a little bit light on detail here. But if you're storing like blob data, like 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 a file is a file in there, like file stream or something. Uh, I would rather store a pointer to the file on, on the di on disk somewhere. Uh, if you're storing the contents of text files in a column, uh, I would prefer to separate that blob data out to a lookup table, with, maintain the primary key between the two, and then uh, just make sure that whenever you, only if you ever need that stuff, uh, to, to, to join to that table. If you don't, so that way it just gets in the way of less things. All right, moving on here. Uh, where's the beef? Hopefully in, hopefully in the fridge. Uh, or if it's not in the fridge, then hopefully it's, it's in the process of being cooked. Uh, I, I, I would recommend a, a cast iron skillet for that. If you're cooking beef, it's probably the, be the, night, the best way for you to treat your meat. It's with a cast iron skillet, it's well seasoned. Uh, if you if you need if you need fuller cooking instructions, I'm happy to provide them for you. All right, and our final question today: uh, What do you wish that more DBAs have read, specific books or blogs, etc.? Well, that's an interesting question uh, because I don't think that the problem is that uh, there's a lack of things that DBAs have read. I think there's a lack of things that DBAs have comprehended. Uh, the problem isn't often with like putting your eyes on words. The problem is often actually comprehending what those words mean and how those words translate to action in the database. Um, I, I, I suppose it would be helpful if DBAs read some books on economics so they could understand that really nothing is free. <laughs> That's an important concept to learn in databases. Everything has a trade-off. Um, I, suppose, I suppose Milton Friedman would be useful in that regard. I don't know. He, he seemed... He seemed you seem keen on that concept. Um, but as far as like specific SQL Server stuff, I mean, selfishly, of course, my blog at, over at ericdarling.com. Uh, you know, from a performance point of view, uh, I think that, um, you know, if, you're, if you want to start like way back foundational material, uh, Craig Friedman, uh, F-R-E-E-D-M-A-N, -E -E like Friedman, Craig, spelled the normal Craig way. Uh, wrote a lot of stuff that is still very applicable to how SQL Server works today. Uh, of course, Paul White um, still still writes to this day. Craig hasn't written in quite a while, but Paul writes quite a bit. Um, uh, Paul Paul is one where you you do need to engage reading comprehension fully, though. That's 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 good there. Um, and is I think another thing that's very important to read is actually the documentation. Um, you know, the, 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 doc, the documentation for SQL Server is certainly flawed and it is certainly incomplete in some ways, but uh, I do think that um, many of the docs articles are at least reasonable attempts to uh, teach you how exactly, how, well, teach you how something was designed. Perhaps not how it works, uh, perhaps not what it was intended to work with, but at least to tell you how it was designed and, you know, give you all the, you know, the syntax for things. And there's a, there's a reasonable amount of stuff in there. Uh, as far as books goes, um, I would actually uh, go back to um, Craig Friedman there. Um, uh, so Kaylin Delaney uh, used to write a lot of books about SQL Server. And back when she was writing these books about SQL Server, uh, a lot of people from Microsoft would contribute, Craig Friedman being one of them, Connor Cunningham was, uh, uh, got involved with one or two of them, but there were a lot of smart people who were involved. I think Kevin Farley was in uh, on at least one of them. Um, there, there's like a whole list of like smart people who would contribute to her books on SQL Server uh, and you know people who worked for Microsoft and had certain insights uh, into how the engine worked that would be beyond what a normal person could reasonably surmise just from using it. So. A lot of those books are still very valuable for foundational material. Granted, a lot of the specifics, um, Slava Ox was in on one of them, uh, there, but there was a lot of, uh, there's a lot of good foundational materials uh, there that sort of gives you a good idea about how SQL Server works as a database, how it functions, um, how a lot of, you know, the, like, you know, the, uh, like, 
monitoring uh, query plans, query execution, storage engine stuff. Granted, some of the, like the details of that has changed over the years because some, a lot of stuff about SQL Server has changed over the years. But it's a very good way to get um, a, a good sort of just deep dive into how databases work. Um, if we want to go beyond books and blogs and you just want like good general database knowledge, um, I, I think I mentioned this recently in another video, but um, the Carnegie Mellon University database group, really smart guy named Andy Pablo, pub, like puts all his lecture, his class lectures and notes and slides and like class projects, like they're all available on YouTube for free. You can sit there, you can watch them. It's about an hour a class. Um, he has, you know, like, you know, he has spring, fall semesters, there's advanced, there's intro to databases, there's one going on right now about query optimization. And if you just kind of want to learn a little bit about like, uh, like, like real da like database internal stuff, not necessarily specific to SQL Server, but good database internal stuff, that's, that's a, that's a very, very good resource. I can't think of anyone who, uh, who has material, the caliber that Andy does, um, with like the, like the up to dateness of it. Cause it's all, it's all like current. He's like still teaching. So there's a lot of great stuff there. So, uh, but that's, I mean, I realize that's somewhat of a roundabout answer. Um, and many of the things in there, you probably would have, uh, come across on your own already. Um, I think another good resource, uh, would be the database administ administrators stack exchange site. Um, a lot of questions that people have about SQL Server or databases in general have already been answered there. Um, and, you know, like, it's not always the easiest to find the, the exact thing. Like, granted, like, site search is not 100% not there. But if you type in, like, some basic uh, keywords and you, or, you know, you, you're looking, like, for like kind of like a like a subject or you know there's like just something like some you know specific thing you're after you can probably find it there so always check the like you know like the database administrator stack exchange site has a lot of great resources on there as far as q a goes you know where you know and, and it's not just like not just like crappy fly-by-night answers either there's a lot of good detailed responses in there so that should that, that that's another good place to look when you are um when you're trying to figure out uh, or uh, figure out a database problem or you have a question about uh, how to do something in a database or how something in a database works. It's another very good resource. But anyway, uh, that brings us about to the end of this, this here Q&A. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get going. I'm gonna wait for some more things to filter in here. Again, if you would, if you would like to add anything to the Q&A, if you would like to be part of the Q and A, if you would like me to answer your question, uh, you can go to this link. The, the 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 link is fully fleshed out down in the video description, so you can click on that, and you can you can you can submit your question, and I will I will put it up on the screen and answer it. That's that's about how it works. So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something, and I will see you in the next video, and uh, hopefully I will be reading your questions on a future office hours. There we go. All right. Goodbye.